Uh, we're going to start out with a little virtual demo of the factory to kind of show you what's going on in this facility. And then we'll take a little tour, um, you know, probably 20, 30 minute tour. Um, and then we'll show you something very special um, after, after hearing you about myself. And uh, the distinguished Sandy Monroe is here from Buddha from Malawi. Um, but I would ask you, um, we, uh, we're going to show you some very special things today, and we have kind of unprecedented access to this facility. Yeah. She brought up to me here in a half ago. You know, maybe we should start like an ambassador program. Like, it'd be cool if like, there were people out there, like, really love that Sarah, and we share our story and stuff. It's like, it'd be attractive to me. And she put it, she sent an email out to her, and she had like a couple thousand people on your Twitter list, and like a hundred people just sent feedback to the I want to be uh, your brand. And now in just uh, 18 months or so, now we have 750 brand ambassadors. So um, it's amazing to have all of your support and uh, a round of applause for everybody that's here today. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a great simulation that uh, Jake from our design um, team uh, put together. Uh, it basically takes you through the 12 assembly steps uh, to build an Altera. Um, 12 simple stations, 12 minutes per station, uh, and about two hours of Matera is built from the stem to the stern, pump the horn, and the basic battery. Um, once we're at rate production of about 40 vehicles a day. So we can build 40 vehicles a day, about 10,000 per year on one shift, uh, and we plan to have more than one shift at this facility. So um, it's, uh, it's amazing to see things coming together. Well, uh, I'll play the simulation and walk you through what's happening. Um, in the middle of the facility, between the two big green poles, is our battery assembly line. So we get raw cells in, 2170 cells, uh, and they are mated together in our very unique and interesting packaging. Uh, and then they are wire bonded together to these machines down here and become a completed battery module. Uh, then those modules are finished, um, and they have some unique. Uh, protection features added, and then six of those battery modules end up in our battery pack. And with those six modules, the case gets put on, and that is the base structure for our vehicle. Our structural battery pack is what marries the front suspension and the rear suspension and takes most of the road loads and impact loads uh, through the life of the vehicle. So in station one, we marry that battery pack with rear suspension. In station two, we then marry the front suspension and the body structure to the vehicle. Then we go around the facility to this far wall over here. And we start uh, over here is inventory. So in that very back corner back there is our inventory area. Uh, inventory flows out to these nice parts for assembly station. And station number three, we get to put in the HVAC and the brake system and some wiring harnesses. In station four, we get some of the interior trim. In station five, we get more thermal components. And in station six, we get the rest of the high voltage harness and the low voltage harness. Most of the high voltage exists on the structural battery pack underneath, and most of the low voltage exists in the vehicle. Station eight, the, the deck lid and the windshield, the nose cone, the camera system, and some exterior panels. And uh, station 11, you get the deck lid, uh, and the door latches are lined. Um, then you roll under the stairs here, um, and the final assembly is uh, it's down between these green poles right here. Uh, and that's when you get things like the, uh, the brake fluid, uh, the washer fluid, um, and then everything gets pressure checked. Uh, it's also where the smoke station will be. So instead of having a, a big station where it'd be raining on the car to see if there's leaks, we inject smoke in the car and see if uh, smoke comes out. And you see this, and that's how we check. Here's the final kind of fit and finish check. Make sure there's no blemishes or anything behind. Uh, gap and finish check. Then, uh, then we roll uh, over here and uh, on the horn and out the door. If something needs to be repaired, it goes onto this uh, yellow line. It gets repaired before it gets put back in the sequence. Um, we roll back around to station one, but that is the bill for the Altera. Uh, Pablo, 
team. We've been working mightily with the guys from the Rome Associates to uh, to lay out the manufacturing floor, to identify the equipment needed for each station, and to do um, digital tack time analysis and how long it takes for each station. So how the operator moves, how they grab tools, how they grab parts, how long it takes to install that part. Um, and we'll show you a little later on the manufacturing execution system. Everything in this facility is managed digitally. So everything is reported, every torque, every bolt, every part that they go in, every serial number, so that years down the line, if there's something wrong with any of those parts, we can trace it all the way back to where it was supplied from and uh, create plans to fix those uh, in the field in the future. But uh, that's a general layout uh, for the facility. I would say we're going to try to keep this floor moving. So maybe two plus students per. First station, but um, we got to kind of move from here to battery. Uh, then we're going to move from battery over to electrical to the EDS system. So we're going to go to the suspension, the office, and the IEM. And then we're going to talk in general about what we can unveil something beautiful. Any questions? What is your software development? Uh, the software for the manufacturing execution system or the software for the vehicle? For the vehicle itself. Uh, for the vehicle, we partnered with a company uh, from Canada called Crank. Uh, then we have our own internal uh, software team, uh, Brian Gallagher, who's actually one of those here today. But uh, we have made some software patents that have made some great leaps and bounds recently. We actually acquired Brian Gallagher's company and brought it in our faces. Uh, they made the play system for other vehicles like Vans vehicles and green machines and much other uh, plays that have you know, the need to display information. So he's, uh, he's very good at figuring out you know, what's the best way to display information and how should you interact. Uh, with the vehicle from a human machine kind of All right, moving back. Oh. What do you expect to do the movies of the ATVs? Uh, the ATVs? Yeah. Uh, we're hoping that by the beginning of next year, uh, we'll start to map out and assemble the line and have those automated guided uh, vehicles. Uh, the, the platform that this vehicle sits on, first we put um, the battery pack on it, then you build a vehicle. Top. That little robot takes the vehicle around called an automated guided vehicle. Uh, and it's really cool because you don't have to have tape on the floor or anything. You just program a course and it remembers that course. You go to station one, stop for 12 minutes, 30 seconds to the next station, stop for 12 minutes, and it's all managed digitally so you can change on the computer and you know, how this work. If something goes wrong in the second station, you can move out of the way, you can repair it, and move back to the sequence. Really cool and versatile. And compared to other automotive where you have to overhead the entries or or rolling assembly lines, uh, it's much more efficient and flexible than when we bring out those different supervised have, have, have you decided on paint or uh, film? Or wrap? So You're going to do film? The vehicle will get to the end of this uh, inspection station, and that's probably where we'll do the film, but we haven't time studied yet, I guess. But uh, film is much more environmentally friendly than paint. Anytime you atomize something, uh, solvents go off in the atmosphere, it's bad, bad, bad. Now, when you create a film, it's all done. You know, the manufacturing process is really, really environmentally friendly. Um, you know, I think uh, it's hopefully going to set an example to the rest of the industry that the paint shop is completely dead. Uh, it also costs a lot of money to build a paint shop. Uh, when traditional automotive plants get started, about a third of their spend is just on the paint shop. Um, my battery company just down the street, uh, Flux Power, uh, it created a battery management system. Uh, that extract you know, the useful life of the cell and has been very close to the So I had you know, over a decade of experience uh, in the battery world. I've been to almost every uh, large scale battery manufacturing plant in Asia, um, uh, some very high tech, some very low tech, not the um, But when we started to create a battery system for Altera, we really wanted a very energy battery pack and something that would last for decades. So um, our battery management system. Is that it's created to manage and maintain the battery pack for a very healthy life. Uh, we can record you know, how the batteries are performing over time, and you can basically see the health of how your batteries are working. And it's something that you can see on the UI screen that a lot of other EV companies don't think you access because they don't tell you what's going on in the battery pack. But we show you basically how balanced your battery pack is in terms of how the voltage and the heat match amongst yourselves. And then we show you a nice graph where if the graph is merged and it's basically a straight line, Battery pack is perfectly healthy for everything that's happening. But if it starts to spread out, then it's less healthy because your, your battery cells are kind of operating in different positions. Can you um, put the so, microphone closer to your mouth, please, so we can hear? Oh, oh no. that's good. Thanks. 
Um, so this is uh, basically the head end battery management board. Uh, this battery management board goes on each battery module. Um, as I showed you in the simulation, um, six of these battery modules make up our battery pack. One, two, three, four, five, six. And the first pack we're introducing is actually a 45 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, 41 kilowatt hours. Uh, that is the 400 mile range of Terra. Next, we'll bring out the 66 kilowatt hour battery pack, then the 23, then the 99 hour. Uh, that can be to 1,000 mile range. The difference in these packs is this pack is just a deconcentrated module. So if you get down to 23 kilowatt hours, you can take cells out of the module and those packs are exactly the same. Uh, in the bigger module, the cells actually get bigger. So they turn into fatter and taller cells. Uh, these are the initial cells that we're using, they're called 2170 cells, because they're 21 millimeters in diameter, 7 millimeters tall. Uh, in the future, you get these uh, higher uh, range packs, uh, those are bigger cells, taller and fatter. Uh, the unique uh, process that we're using to attach the cells <coughs> to our current collectors um, is we use a process called ribbon bonding. So we bond to the cell, bond to the current collector, bond to the next cell. And that's how you get power from the front of the battery module all the way into the battery module. Uh, any questions on our beautiful area of battery? One quick question. Yes. So with Tesla, they're trying to build a bigger battery cell. <coughs> so how would Tesla be able to cool it down because with a smaller one, as I understand, it would generate less heat than a bigger one? So uh, Actera abuses the battery pack much less than most other EVs because we don't get hold as much power from the pack. We're burning 100 watt hour per mile, we have to burn 4 or 500 watt hour per mile. So the amount of energy is coming out of the battery is less. So one, we have a lot less cooling needs in the battery pack. So we use base plate cooling. <laughs> Only really cool from the bottom of the cell. Uh, that's all the conduction we need to get enough heat out of the battery pack when we're charging and discharging the cell. When, um, when uh, other companies do it, uh, they are fast charging at a very high charge rate and discharge at a very high discharge rate. The batteries create a lot of heat. The internal impedance of the cell, the electron take out the heat. Um, so Tesla uses a method of going between the cells so they have a lot more contact area to cool the pack. We're lucky we don't need that because it weighs less, it makes the pack more energy dense, um, and it accomplishes all the things we need. So I would say we're different from uh, the Tesla in that regard because the Tesla makes it very fine. Yep. This is the first time I've heard of the body, or just body integrated, or? Oh, yeah. Uh, can you say just a little bit more about that? Well, we can look at the actual battery pack here, but um, the, the way this battery pack is designed is it basically has the front suspension and the rear suspension attached to the battery pack. So the load path through the vehicle, through the suspension, into the body is through the battery pack. And that's, uh, that's unique uh, in the industry. Tesla is doing um, you know, something similar with how they bond themselves together and make them very strong in the pack and try to create some you know, frame resilience. Um, but uh, as far as we know, this is the first time where you know, really um, you know, the battery pack is just on its own uh, to carry the front of their suspension like we're doing. Um, obviously, they're very unique in terms of uh, light weight and efficiency, so of course we're doing things a little differently. But it makes the vehicle very strong, uh, and we don't really need the frame rigidity like from other companies because you have a single wheel on the back, so it kind of you know, teeter totters on the wheel. And so it's a horrible vehicle where you have a lot of. Follow question. On the structural battery pack, is that a new development or has that been around for a while? Uh, well, we've been developing it for about a year. Um, you know, other people in the industry have been rocking products for years. And we've been it um, so we're like, we're very excited about it. Thank you. All right, if you're cool, so it's certainly one of the highest level. Uh, to be clear, this is a liquid cool battery pack or a liquid cool from the base plate. Um, so we, we aspire to maybe have an air cool system, but we need to do a lot more testing. So you've been operating for shuttle ballet? Yep. It's mostly black top on the base. Just what you make. You're sitting in the park on black top to the top. We have a lot of people, so hard to really get uh, fresh in here. But, um, how our engineering is set up is um, on this side of the top of the building, uh, we have some of marketing and finance and design, um, and uh, even I set up there, and above 
this over here, we have a more mechanical engineering. So my prodynamic chassis, um, you know, all the mechanical of it, line structures. Uh, we also have a battery uh, team up in the corner over there. A bunch of the electrical engineering down here. So we have the guys working on solar charger uh, over here. We have wiring harness. We have high voltage. Uh, in this table right here is actually a table that represents our whole vehicle in terms of control system. So uh, everything that needs to be actuated in the vehicle, the, uh, the window uh, motor to go up and down, the camera systems, the sensors to uh, uh, let you get into the vehicle, the actuators to open the door locks. Um, and we've been able to test you know, how everything works on the pinch before we actually go put it in the vehicle. So um, an interesting note is that we develop our own um, uh, control hardware uh, and firmware. So to lower the weight of a wiring harness, a typical wiring harness in a, a Civic or a Camry can weigh up to 90 pounds, um, our wiring harness weighs 30 pounds because we have these little control computers that exist around the vehicle, and all we have to do is run a power and a ground wire to that control module and a communication wire, three wires, um, and that's all you need to get to different control areas. So um, the uh, passenger rear of the vehicle, the driver rear, the doors, the nose cone, and then we just communicate with those little control boards and tell them what to do. You know, blink the turn signal, turn on the reverse light, uh, open the charge uh, hatch in the back, uh, Elon stuff Musk like that. Would be what? <laughs> Elon Musk would be jealous. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, it's something that the rest of the EV industry is striving for, how to take weight out of their vehicle. Uh, one way to do it is increasing voltage, not control volts, 48 volts, you know, or the gauge of the wires. Uh, but the way we've chosen to do it and something we have control over is to build these little control modules and then decrease the wiring harness just by having power and ground and a communication go everywhere instead of from your dash have a switch that runs all the way to the tail of your vehicle which gets very very heavy and just seems very wasteful to us it also lets us through software um, hopefully enhance your user experience over time uh, there's no real buttons in the Aptera you'll see um, you know when gamma rolls out here there's two door switches on the door and there's a hazard light button and two uh, accessory light buttons that's it there's no other button. You need to roll the window up and down, it's on the center screen. You need to change the air conditioning, it's on the center screen. So we can optimize that over time with your feedback and give you a better and better user experience as we're able to over the air upgrade your system. Um, so but that all starts here with the firmware and how everything's controlled. Um, the software team is actually in the solar uh, building down the street. One thing I didn't mention, this is an 80,000 square foot facility. This is just for final assembly. Down the street, two miles, is our solar uh, facility. Uh, they'll be building solar in our sub assemblies there. So those parts will come here, and they'll be put on the final assembly line to build those vehicles. But uh, we call that kind of our manufacturing center because they're building sub assemblies and solar, and this our final assembly facility uh, here. Question on the uh, electrical part: What does the stocks control in those two buttons that are on the on the yoke? Uh, his question is, uh, in the production vehicle, what will the stalks control and what will the little buttons on the steering wheel control? Uh, as of now, the stalks that your turn signals and the brights, turn your bright lights on, and that's it. Uh, everything else is on your screen and the buttons in the center uh, can be programmed by you to do what you want them to do. Uh, but standard uh, will be you know, volume uh, and track. Um, skip is the easy one. Uh, but you can change them if you'd like to have fan control you know, at, your, at your fingertips and you don't really care as much for back skip. You can have one program to um, scroll through the music and it click to skip to the next song type thing. So, so volume and then click to the next song. And then this one? And then that one is turn signal. Yeah. And then um, right. Windshield wiper. Uh, regen will be controlled on the center screen and won't, there won't be like dial Oh, no horn. Yes, porn. <laughs> it may not be a press, though. It may be a, a, a capacitor. It senses your hand on it, um, not a counterpoison. Are you guys using Canvas or? Are we using Can and Lin? Okay. Uh, Lin is just a cheaper um, you know, version of Can communication. And as a follow-on, will that be exposed to people playing with their own cars as a like? available or do we have to solder in our own? Uh, the question is, are we going to make the vehicle kind of user accessible in terms of changing stuff? I would say to a degree. <laughs> um, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh, I don't know that we're going to make all the cam controls available. 
say, go hog wild. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, uh, an interesting thing about our vehicle is the, the can communication is set in different levels. So there's kind of a safety level, which won't let you touch, uh, but then there's kind of a, a user level that may be a lot more compromising. Uh, um, something that's a little harder to see here, maybe we can squeeze between these tables and come down here a little bit, but I do think this is important and notable. This is our manufacturing execution system. And this is our digital build for the Atera. So this, Nick and his team, did an amazing job in um, at um, creating a system where he can virtually build a vehicle. So he checks parts out of inventory, they get scanned in, he moves those parts from inventory to the assembly floor, and then the vehicles come through, he has it set for 12 second interval, which is really 12 minutes. Uh, but you can see 12 assembly stations and everything that happens in those assembly stations on the screen here. And then the little screen to your right actually shows you what parts are flowing out of inventory and onto vehicles as they're being built. And that gives us you know, a leg up. I mean, this is my eighth startup, um, and I just drool over systems like this that I wish I had in my previous companies. Um, this costs us a lot of money, a lot of time on mixed parts. Uh, to execute, but Sandy Monroe and everyone has advised us and said, if you can get systems like this implemented before you ever build your first vehicle, you will have a much more successful company. And it helps us keep uh, controls on <laughs> helps us keep control on our building materials cost. It makes everything very traceable. We also have an ERP system, so all of our accounting is digitally run. It uh, you know brings in inventory as needed, and then the inventory is executed into bills via this system. And then in the future for a warranty system that will track back to this, you know, everything that was put into your Aptera, so we know if there's a problem in the series of like we got hundred bolts, and hundred bolts, you know, they were bad, and we have to you know, track that five years from now and figure out what happened with those bolts. But I think it's it's really notable, and I think if you guys have seen other EV startups or been around, it's not a thing that, that many company startups that I have seen have ever been able to accomplish. So I think it's a real real big compliment to our team that we've been able to execute on this. Thanks, Nick. Um, as you know, our suspension is very unique, and obviously we want it to be very lightweight. Um, for those that have experienced a ride in Beta, it is an amazing driving vehicle, uh, and that's a compliment to our suspension um, vehicle dynamic team. A uh, big thing that we did in the front suspension is we obviously made the suspension much more aerodynamic for air to flow uh, through the upper and lower control arm. Uh, we also added the sway bar, and now everything is kind of you know production quality, automotive bushings and such. Uh, in the rear, we did something really unique uh, that we have a patent filed for. Uh, it's a trailing link suspension. Uh, most other three wheelers that you've seen out there, they have a single sided swing arm, like a BMW motorcycle. Uh, it's a big arm, and then the bottom of the wheel is just attached to the side of the arm. Uh, the problem is, motorcycle dynamics like that uh, aren't really the same as automotive dynamics. So, when you drive the vehicles that have single sided swing arms, they feel a little different. Uh, but this new trailing link design, it feels like any other small, kind of sporty vehicle that you drive. That's the Model 3, you name it. It feels very comfortable going over speed bumps, going around corners, acceleration, deceleration. That's where you mostly feel that when you would uh, step on the brakes um, in, instead of uh, you know diving, you'd actually raise the nose up. And then on acceleration, you're doing exactly the opposite, going to go down. So, um, you know, a traditional automobile, that's completely the opposite. So, I think this is uh, an amazing step forward, and uh, and you will all feel it when you find this stuff in your test drives. Uh, hopefully, right here. Um, any questions on the suspensions? Uh, these will be these will all be pressure cast parts in production. Uh, right now, what's on the vehicle is the CNC mill. Um, you know, two production design, but not uh, out of production tools yet. Uh, those tools are not uh, fun and expensive. Yes, sir. When you pop a tire, how easy will it be to do it yourself, or do you have to bring it in? Um, <clears throat> The tire is mounted, and we'll go over here. The tire is mounted just like any other typical vehicle. Uh, you have a rim that's bolted on just like any other lug tire. Uh, the only difference for us is you actually have to take off the wheel cover uh, to, get to, the, to get to the tires. Uh, so in the front of the vehicle, we want that to be less than 30 seconds. Uh, in the rear, it's a little longer. It's a little harder to get to the rear tire. Uh, but you know, it's not like a half an hour disaster. It's a couple minutes to get the wheel cover off, and you actually get the wheel off. You can do it yourself, uh, but you know, uh, we we expect that they're probably calling for a Most uh, most electric vehicles now they, they don't shift on the tires with the weight, uh, so it's just kind of a fact of life. That's how it's hard to hear you. Is it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. 
Uh, this is our drivetrain design. Um, our beautiful new inverter. Uh, that's a silicon carbide inverter. It's here. Nice. It looks so beautiful and sexy um, and small. Uh, this was our last inverter. Uh, this inverter does, uh, does more power, stays cooler, uh, and the silicon carbide is just much more efficient. Uh, it's an expensive way to go, but efficiency is the name of our game, so uh, that's how we created this. Uh, the Alape guys, uh, Luther, thank you, um, brought us uh, uh, the new version of our production motor. Uh, this is the first one that's been put together, so it's amazing to see. Uh, but this is the motor that will go on our production vehicles, and they're working in Slovenia, Slovenia mightily to get that, that factory ready to really pump these out for us. Um, but um, you'll notice, uh, if you haven't seen an in-wheel motor before, it's exactly the opposite from a regular motor. You usually have a motor that's, uh, that stays put on the outside and the center spins. You have a rotor that spins on the inside. This is exactly the opposite. Um, the, uh, the center stays still and the outside spins, and that's what spins your wheel. Um, there's, a, there's a radial ring of magnets around here, and that's what produces all the power. So it's a nearly you know, solid state uh, motor in that regard. The only thing that's wearing on this motor when it's spinning is the axle bearing. So you know, in the future, if something goes wrong, it's just the axle bearing. And most vehicles out there, they have million mile axle bearings now. You don't really hear of new modern automobiles having bad axles. So we expect this to last a long, long time. And with a bigger radius on the, uh, <clears throat> on the magnet ring, we get a lot more regenerative force. So we're able to save our brakes. Uh, so we're hoping that we have you know, more than a 500,000 mile brake service interval on this vehicle, uh, which is just amazing. Most of your braking comes through regen braking instead of the actual uh, calipers smashing the disc uh, with your brake pads. He forgot. Oh, no. Uh, we're, there's two brake calipers right here. One here and one here. So uh, they're smaller brake calipers because they have to fit uh, in the motor enclosure. Uh, but that gives us plenty of braking force, and we've been out doing braking tests in the suspension team and the braking system. It's great. Yes, sir. On the silicon carbide uh, inverter, is that designed by Aptera or supplied on the specification? Can you tell us who the supplier is? Uh, it's designed by Aptera, and we'll have a contract manufactured for high volume production. It's uh, unfortunately something you can't just go out and buy. That's very funny. Who the supplier is? Uh, we, we will have a contract manufacturer. We don't know who the supplier is going to be yet, uh, but uh, we are building it in a way that we have a pretty broad, broad uh, supply chain flexibility in how we get it built. There's lots of contract manufacturers that build you know, kind of power electronic devices like this now. Uh, they just have to build it with their silicon carbide chips in the way you know, that we design it. But you remember, okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that wasn't for the axle seal, that was for the motor seal that goes around, and they've, uh, they've done great work in making that seal uh, basically last as long as the motor should last. This is Luca from Old <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll introduce him uh, then a little later. Uh, this is our uh, composite team led by Marcelo. Um, uh, Marcelo is doing uh, you know, innovations with how for composites uh, stay strong. Um, and uh, also uh, doing some work on our on our new um, SNC panels and how these panels hold up with the vinyl coating for the paint over time. So we've been doing kind of outdoor testing uh, to make sure that you know once we put film on your vehicle, it lasts a long time. Um, yes, we are trying to launch an Aptera seatboard uh, with our, our uh, we have a very unique uh, UV curable resin. Uh, and we want to do that, but we've been so busy with other work that he hasn't had time uh, to really make molds and try to make anything with that. But uh, we have a lot of skaters here, and we, you know, we'd love to support the community. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Beta. Um, obviously, you guys saw the Alpha vehicles up front there. That was the very first iteration of Aptera, almost two years old now. Um, this is uh, Beta. It was designed more than nine months ago, probably ten months ago now. Uh, but this is a suspension demonstrator that we've been taking out and abuse testing, uh, trying to flip it, uh, driving 45 miles an hour over curbs at an angle to pop all the tires, um, you know, pothole tests, stuff like that to make sure that, you know, it's every bit as durable as you need it to be uh, for daily driving and abuse when it happens. Um, <clears throat> an interesting note from how that vehicle evolved to this vehicle, it's 1% bigger on the interior. Uh, we did a bunch of ergonomic testing with the first alphas and found, you know, we'd like more passenger room and we'd like more battery room. 
Uh, so we made the whole vehicle bigger, but through some aerodynamic tricks, we actually made the aerodynamic drag lower, even though we made the vehicle bigger. So uh, this corner right here by your head moved out 55 millimeters. Your, your whole body moved to the center line 20 millimeters. Your head moved over. Uh, and your H point, your butt, uh, moved down 25 millimeters. So just in general, making more room uh, to be comfortable uh, in the Aptera. Um, this is our interior mock-up. Um, this is what we use to validate you know, uh, your reach for how you touch the center screen and how you control things, uh, for how the armrest feels, for how the seat feels. Uh, it's where we experimented first with the yoke after getting just a ton of feedback <laughs> uh, on the yoke position. Uh, we put a lot of time into this vehicle. It feels really good, it feels right. It feels right with our suspension setup, and we think you are all gonna really, really like this vehicle uh, when we have it uh, for production next year. Um, that's it for the tour. We can take a couple more questions and then we'll have you all sit down and, and, then, and adjourn over there and then do a little more talking. Pedal adjustments. Uh, pedal adjustments are not a thing in this vehicle. Seat adjustment is uh, and wheel adjustment is. So uh, up, down with the wheel and you can move the seat uh, forward and back. Uh, the seat is a rising uh, seat. So when you scoot it forward, it's up too. You got an idea what max length on a leg is? You can see this probably we do not, except we experimented with people up to 6'8 uh, in this vehicle, and it was comfortable for kind of a full range of sizes. Obviously, there's people that are 6'8 that have very long torsos that may not fit well. The opposite is true. There could be guys with 6'8 that have really long legs, and that, uh, that's different as well. Uh, what kind of size tire are you guys banging here? Uh, this tire is um, a 255 45 R16. Any suspension guys here? It's a 195 45 16. 195 45 16. So, yes, you can get them from kind of, you know, go down to discount tire or wherever and get tires for this vehicle. In uh, the two wheel drive version, one of the motors goes out if the car still drivable. Well, that's a good question. He asked in the two wheel drive version, if one of the motors goes out, is the vehicle still drivable? I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> that, that's something for the uh, for the vehicle controls team uh, to sort out. And you know, to be honest, we're just at the beginning of kind of vehicle validation and tuning. So we hope to have a final design for the vehicle by November. Um, and then after we have that final design, we'll be building the production validation tools. So things to fine tune things like region braking um, and driver feel. Um, you know, the, the steering is electric assisted and stuff like that. Um, and um, torque steering, uh, so how we control the wheels, and failure scenarios, like one, one motor goes bad, it's probably because of the inverter, not the motor, nothing to really go wrong with the motor, uh, but you lose power to one wheel, should you still be able to drive on the other wheel? I don't see why not, but um, you know, I don't have a firm answer to that question. How cool was AI in constructing this whole thing? Yeah, artificial intelligence has been an amazing tool for us to make this vehicle lighter weight, um, and to do a lot of the kind of um, analysis uh, of, um, you know, kind of uh, vehicle dynamics um, and how to tune the suspension like durometer or bushings and stuff like that uh, for noise, vibration, harshness, how it enters uh, the vehicle. Uh, artificial intelligence basically takes a problem that we give it and runs through thousands of possible um, solutions to that problem and then tries to find the best solution. And, you know, an engineer can do that, but it takes them a long, long time, uh, you know, weeks, weeks, months, years, uh, whereas a computer it doesn't get hungry and it doesn't get tired. His girlfriend doesn't break up with it. Like it just it just works thousands of cycles um, and comes up with a solution. So it's been a very, very useful tool. And I think one of the reasons why Aptera exists is that the computational tools over the last 10 years have just gotten so much better. We're able to design the whole vehicle in CAD now and know that it will work. We have very good simulation tools to know how the vehicle will perform in real life. Um, and aerodynamically, um, I'm the aerodynamics guy, um, you know, we can give it problems um, that would just, we would have never found a solution 10 years ago for. Uh, but now artificial intelligence can tell us, oh, squeeze the wheel pan four millimeters to the left and you'll decrease the drag on that wheel pan by 10%. How would we have ever you know, come up <laughs> with that by ourselves? Um, unless we just had thousands of different wheel pans built and took them to the wind tunnel. So uh, it's been a very, very useful tool. Uh, one more question. Uh, safety testing. Uh, safety testing. We, uh, you know, once we have the final design, uh, you know, our body structures were previously uh, Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards tested. 
highest roof crush strength of any passenger vehicle on the road, uh, frontal, offset, frontal, side impact testing. We did all that, but this is a whole new, you know, architecture. Um, you know, we, we've designed it to be stronger than the previous architecture, but once we have a final design in November, we'll have to build representative samples of that design and then slam them against the wall, crush them, and all that stuff. Uh, so probably, you know, uh, Q2 of next year, we'll share videos. You know, we want to take everybody on the journey, so we'll show everyone, you know, how those are performing and, and why we think that, you know, this vehicle is not just a safe vehicle, but the safest thing you can be on the road. Just one last one. Um, what's the air circulation? How you guys solve that problem? Air circulation. Yeah, inside a vehicle. Uh, he's asking a question about air circulation. We, we have, uh, and something you'll see uh, in Gamma, which I'll, I'll give you a sneak peek now, is we don't have vents on the dash. Right. We have vents around the user screen, and those vents are what, uh, what pushes air out to the cabin. Uh, that solves a bunch of packaging problems for us, and it makes for a very nice circulation loop uh, to have a very efficient air conditioning unit in the vehicle.